that's when I stood up for my family to correct everything. And that's what we're doing today. So it's time for these things now and like that. So, But uh, my uncle that uh, got killed in France, World War I, we see military records where uh, 1921, they were, he was put on a ship in Belgium and brought back, they docked in New Jersey. He was put on a train and they returned him to Dupree, South Dakota, where I live today, where the blood family lives today. That's how they returned my uncle in 1921. And, um, after two years after this war, um, they, when they returned all the soldiers, <coughs> the countries that were involved in World War I, some of them protested in the United Nations. They said, why are these natives fighting for the United States when they're their own country? So in 1924, to get around this, the United States made a citizen act made a citizen of this country in 1924. So my grandfathers, they said, this is when they put our people under democracy. And they said democracy was a legal way to lie, cheat, and steal by majority rule, why everybody has a right to vote today. So under this system, 51% over 49%, they're going to go at 51%, no matter if it's right or wrong, majority rules. And then my grandfather said, this is when they put our people under taxation. This is when we were given a social security number. We became a taxable item. So you, under democracy and taxation, you could change your name a hundred times, but your identity is your social security number that you carry. You're a taxable item. So this is where as truth. Under democracy and taxation, if you think you own land or whatever, like this, you know, try not paying your taxes for one year. They'll come and foreclose you and give to somebody that will pay these taxes. So as truth, you don't own nothing under this system. And this is what they put our people under in 1924. So 2024, we're just not going to be an American citizen for 100 years. When my grandfather said, we've been here before anybody came to this continent of these red nations. So they said uh, these red nations, when they were here, before anybody came here, there was no jealousy. There was no greed. There was no selfishness. No judgmental criticism, superstitious, or fear. These seven English words never existed on this continent of these red nations. These were brought here. So my grandfather, they said, when just the red nations were here, we called each other, Huhunupa in our language means two-legged. In 1800, my grandfather said, this two-legged became Makawicha, in our language means earth man. How my grandfathers look at a person. It had no skin color. It was a person that had a red heart out for nature. Wanted what was right, good, positive, true, sacred. And this person, when he or she stepped outside their home and stepped on Unchimaka, grandmother earth, they stepped on her with respect. They walked on her with respect because they knew she was a living thing that they're walking on. Because all life grows on our grandmother, including us. So this is what black, red, yellow, white are forgetting how to walk on our grandmother. Because our grandfather said they were all put on this earth with truth they were all put on this earth equally. And this is what they're forgetting about. So 2001, when I was told to stand up for my family, because when I got into my culture, my grandfather said, if you do the culture, no politics. 
If you do politics, no culture. You can't mix both of them. So which one is it going to be, grandson? So I said, I'll do the culture and the politics, no. By 2001, when I was told to stand up for my family, my grandfather said, this one time, grandson, we're going to allow you to do politics. So this one, I stood up for my family to correct everything. But um, this two-legged earth man, 2001, they said, when we got, when I was told to do this, <coughs> grandson, remind them, today, truth, honesty, and trust is missing in this world. So tell the world of these things that they're missing. So this is our 277th time I'm going to say this to the world. <laughs> that whenever you're truthful and honest with yourself, when you don't lie to yourself, then you don't lie to the Creator or God, or you don't lie to people when you talk to them. And when you walk like this, that's when the trust comes back. Because sometimes trust has to be earned. So this is what, uh, how truth, honesty, and trust is going to come back into this world. But like anything, only each individual could do this. Nobody could do it for you. Only you could do this. Nobody could walk in your shoes. Only you can. So my grandfather, as I said, grandson, when you was born, you was born with two sets of eyes. One that you see everything physical. So I always use our book as an example. When you look at that, you see a book. But your other set of eyes is when you use your heart through your eyes. In our language, we call it chante ishta. Then you see the real truth. So when you look at your heart through your eyes at our book, for the real truth, it came from a tree, how paper was made. That's the real truth. So it's time to look at the real truth of things and like this. But again, only each individual could do this. Nobody could do it for you. And like this, so it's up to each individual to make these changes that need to be done. So this IME system, they put us under democracy and taxation. I mean, coming across this country, that system um, run into people, and we've seen it in the big cities where a person could live beside another person for 20, 30 years and not even know that person's name, their neighbor. That's the IME system. When these Red Nations were here, it was we and us. We thought of others and like this. So to think of others, this is where we need to think of our grandmother Earth, Munchimanka. Time to stand up for her and defend her. So these kind of things the changes that need to happen, only we could do this, each individually. Nobody could do it for us. So it's time to be truthful and honest with yourself. Time to not lie to yourself. Time to look at a person's heart, not the color of their skin. And like this, time, time for these things. Time to heal our grandmother, to walk on her with respect and all this. This is where people forget when they come out to home. They're already looking way over there. They're on a schedule, all this stuff. <laughs> so um, when uh, 2007, uh, I had a friend that um, heard us talk up there at Little Big Horn Battlefield. His name was William Carrington. And his grandfather was here in 1866 <coughs> to 1868 the, at Fort Field Kearney, Story, Wyoming. Uh, which today is between Buffalo and Sheridan, Wyoming. And uh, when, when his grandfather was here, he was the commanding officer of that fort. So we met him at Little Bighorn. And he heard us talk about my grandfather's agency, so he said, can I, I only live an hour from Washington, D.C., can I go look for your grandfather's agency? So I said, go ahead, go look. But I told my younger brother, I want to see if he's really serious in what he said. 
because people say things and not do it to her. And there he called back and he said, I went to the Smithsonian. I went to the American Library of Congress. I didn't find it there. So I knew that he was seriously looking then, so I'll go to the Secretary of State office. And he's a historian, so, because um, he did some research and stuff at the Smithsonian and they know him over there. And uh, these historians, when they get that degree, they're given a code. When they research, they have to be shown original copies of things. They could look deeper than we can as citizens. And uh, so um, I told him what it was, so he, he called back and that's what he said that. I went to the Secretary of State office and I asked, and two security led me downstairs. Led me down the hall and they opened this door to this room. In this room, there's a table sitting, sitting there with glass over the top of this table. And under this glass was Crazy Horse Agency, a docking number, land description. Had a presidential seal on it. Now I remember what you said about that presidential seal. Because under the federal government, the federal law, when the president puts a presidential seal on a document, that's an executive order. And under their federal law, a presidential seal that's not broke is still law today. So he said, I remember what you said, so I walked around this table and I inspected this seal. Your grandfather didn't lie. That seal's not broke. So I said, our grandfathers don't lie to us. And this is where if you have faith in truth, if somebody told you a truth, you don't have to go see or you don't have to go touch it to make sure it's real if you're told the truth. You have that faith in that. This is what, uh, so he called back and said, yeah, I seen it. It's sitting over there. While we're in this federal court case today to determine the blood heirs of the crazy horse estate. It's for my grandfather's agency that was promised to him. So coming from a federal agency, uh, Shan River, when this federal government made these federal agencies, it's called trust status lands on these federal agencies. And trust status lands are non-taxable. A non-Indian can't own it, sell it, live on it, or trade it. Because I have some of this land on Shan River where I come from, trust status lands. Well, that's how we want my grandfather's agency, 8.7 million acres, all in trust status lands. And these are laws this government made when they put us on these federal agencies. And they made these to make us lose our identity, who we are, these federal agencies. It almost worked. But now we're starting to stand up with truth now. Time to stop lying to ourselves and like this. Time to think of our ancestors before anybody came to this continent, how they walked here and looked at life and at this. So these kind of things um, is happening, is coming. So 2001, when I was told to stand up for my Lakota grandfathers, my Dakota and Lakota grandfathers, and grandson, don't, don't forget about us. And that's where the Iowa Territory came. And the Iowa Territory, uh, was a Dakota, Nakota, and a Wapton Nation's land basis. And uh, so uh, today, uh, if you have an old encyclopedia set, you could look under President, <coughs> president Van Buren. He was the eighth president. It's in your encyclopedia if you have an old one. And on the first page, it shows this Iowa territory that I'm talking about. So, uh, but it's half of South Dakota, east half, east half of North Dakota. <coughs> it's all of Minnesota, west part of Wisconsin, all of Iowa. That's the Dakota, Nakota, and Wapton Nation's land bases. So we had this checked out in 2008, and we had some lawyers from Sioux Falls and Rapid City go check this out for us. And before they left, we gave them two names. And when they went to Washington, they were up there for two weeks uh, researching and like this. They came back and they said, we found a paper trail up there. 
everything you guys said was true. One thing about this country, whether they're right or wrong, they document everything. <laughs> so they tell on themselves. So um, when we were up there, we told them, we told them these two names you gave us. And the government said, where did you get these names? These are classified names that you gave us. So we had to tell them the truth. They said, we, you gave it to them in 1838 when you came and surveyed this Iowa territory. One square mile like this. So the names that we gave them were the, on this map that they made in 1838 of the Dakota, Nakota, and the Wapton Nations land bases. That was a map maker and the surveyors at that time. Their names were on this map. So they know that we've seen this map. We know that this exists. So I stood up for my, my Dakota and Dakota grandfathers. But they said they couldn't file it in the United States because that land base goes into Canada and involves Canada and the United States, so it becomes an international case correct it. So this international lawyer that's coming for our Krajor's family is going to file this in world court. It's time for truth now, and like this. So then my Cheyenne grandfather said, don't forget about me. <laughs> because maternal side of my family, because paternal, I'm Krajor's grandson. My maternal side of my mom's side, I'm Black Buffalo's grandson, Nikoju Lakota. Um, Morning Star, Dawn Knife, Cheyenne, I'm a grandson of him. I'm also a grandson of War Eagle, Dakota, Nakota, Midwakton, Wakpekute. And I'm also a grandson of Paul Traversy, Teofa Brewer, Frenchman. I also have French grandfathers. And that's my identity, who I am. So this word, when you deny a bloodline that's in you, you're denying a grandfather or a grandmother. You're forgetting about them. So it's time to really uh, look at yourself and be truthful and honest with yourself like this. So my Cheyenne grandfather said their nation is the Platte River, Nebraska, and Wyoming. East side of the Rockies all the way down to the Santa Fe Trail. That's the Cheyenne nation. My grandfather, Marnie Star Donai, said my father, Shaolai, is buried west of today Fort Collins. He left in uh, 1908, so he had a probate and like this, a death certificate. But um, he said uh, that's where, that's the Shan's ancestral burial grounds of their nation before anybody came to this continent, just like the Black Hills is for us for our nation. So today the Crazy Horse family, what my grandfather was doing when he was here preserving, protecting the Black Hills, we're also gonna do that too, using their laws that they made against, for these agencies they put us on. Time for truth now, like this. So they said, I'll say, I hope my French grandfathers don't Want me to go claim France? <laughs> yeah, but uh, when we went to Norway last summer, because um, our book is Norwegian, we did some talks and like their signings over there. We did eleven of them, so Europe had heard this. What I was told to tell the world. But uh, I told my friends, I said, uh, my first step, I step onto Europe. I'm planning a staff. I'm claiming Europe for the great Sioux nation. <laughs> <laughs> Just what they did when they came here. So <laughs> I'm going to do the same when I go over. So they said, you should live stream that. <laughs> but these kind of things, it's time for truth now and like this and a lot of corrections. There's a lot of assumptions out there and like this. So uh, these kind of things were correcting for my, my grandfathers and like that. So, but, um, this book came out in 2016. So this is where uh, we always ask when we give these talks, if you read it and you have any questions. And also, the Blood Family, we have a, uh, a page in Facebook called Tashunka Vitko Tiwai, 
slash Craig George family. You could go to that page after you read the book. If you have any questions, you could ask on there. You'll be talking to me and Bill, who are the administrators of that page. So we'll answer any questions. Today, there's over 56,000 following our page worldwide. So uh, there's a lot of people that watch what we do. <laughs> but our family, uh, in our language, Wopilatunka means a big we thank you from the Creator family for coming and listening. You guys all have a safe journey home and like this, you know, but now it's time for questions. So if you have any questions, it's time for that. So thank you very much for listening to me. And my restaurant fits on my grandfather's cheek right here. So you might have to make 15 Mount Rushmore just to cover my grandfather's head because they're carving a whole mountain, you know, so it's going to take some time. Yes. How do you guys relate to that? I'm sure Crazy Horse was probably really would never carve a beautiful mountain. 1948, we met with Korzak. Yeah. And he asked permission from the family to do from this. From the family. Yes. And we gave him permission. And so that's why uh, their dream up there that they have when this, we're in, uh, we'll, we'll be in litigation for when this court case is done, determine the blood errors. But um, in our litigation, we know we're going to have funds. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we want uh, Korzak and Ruth's dream to come true. So we're going to do a medical university up there that's going to teach modern and traditional medicine. And like our grandfather said, a time and day in the future is coming when the sick of the world are going to be sent there to get healed. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're in, in support of that. Yeah. So and also because my grandfather is really um, thinks about the children, you know, because uh, in 1889, 90, when this country said kill the Indian and save the man, they took our children sent them to Pennsylvania, Oklahoma, Oregon, like that. And some of our children um, are laying over there in a grave as unknown on the headstones. But we, our nation, has our way of living life, our way of prayer, we have a way to find out their families and like this. So when we're legal and like this and we have the funds, we're going to return all the children to their like my grandfather, you know, that's his wish. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you very much for both of you for the great book and uh, this very, you know, illuminating, clarifying history. Um, in the book, uh, you talk about Crazy Horse's death and he was wearing a red blanket, a robe. Yeah. And then later in the book, there was a reference to a red blanket, a beaded blanket. Now, is this the same blanket? No. Does the family still have? No, everything was stolen in 1966. Was stolen. I was wondering if the family still had it. the blanket. You know? So we kind of know where it's at, but um, it'll be better when we're legal um, <laughs> that you have the law behind you <laughs> to get these things that need to be. But the main thing is we got this pipe back right. to correct everything. and. And the one that has it doesn't even know that that has it. They have it. They, it's in boxes in their basement. So, uh, no, no, that was her father that had that stuff. When, when her father passed, they gave all that father stuff to her, and she just put it in the basement without looking. So a lot of stuff is still sitting there. but. It's better to come and say we're the Crazyers family, and we could prove it in federal court who we are, because of all the assumptions that were done before, we're able to prove who we are. So now it's time to have the proof with the law behind you to get these things back, and like that, because that belongs to our, my grandfather, so, and like that. So, but do it legally, yeah, and like this. So, yeah. yeah. Any more questions? Yes. How, how does the Fort Laramie Treaty of 1868 play into all this? It doesn't. When this country declared war on us in 1876, 
Under international laws, when one country declares war on another country, all agreements, treaties made between these two countries become null and void in a court of law. So when the United States declared war on us in 1876, all agreements and treaties made with our nation, the Lakota nation, you can't use it in a court of law. So that means that all the treaties are no good for us. Why? They're, they're, you can't use them and like this. So this is how, uh, when uh, the Dakota and Dakota nations, uh, how we show that uh, in an agent, his name was Ramsey, that uh, was having our people, the Dakota and Dakotas, sign a paper and said, uh, if you sign this, we'll give you uh, double rations and we'll give you seed to plant and like this. So they were all signing this paper when, when in reality they were giving their lands away, signing their lands away. So when this was reported to Washington, Washington came to investigate and they caught him in the act. So they took him back to Washington, they indicted him, found him guilty, and relieved him of his duties because he was an Indian agent. Where today, this Indian agent is a superintendent that's sitting on these agencies under the BIA. That's the Indian agent today. But um, when we were in Sioux Falls uh, uh, giving a talk like this, and in the audience was the federal judge that awarded this court case with the Hornell Brewing Company back to the family. He said, I'm the federal judge that gave this back to you, family doctor, thank you very much. And like this, but after their questions, then I raised my hand, so everybody really looked at me, because I was sitting up front, but I, <laughs> I said, I have a question for a federal judge. When a federal official is, is, breaks the law, is indicted, and found guilty, all transactions by that government official become null and void. You can't use it in a court of law. He said, that's a federal law. So when Ramsey did this as an Indian agent, people thought they signed their, their lands away. You can't use that in a court of law because he was found guilty. So as truth, these lands still belong to the Dakota and Dakota nations and the Wapta nations. It has third lands. Mm -hmm. But because it's an international case, because um, it goes into Canada, it has to be filed in world court to correct that. So this is what we're doing for my grandfathers. Mm -hmm. These things. That, uh, so they're the ones that taught us these laws by living, putting us under five laws <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that we live by every day. Like that. So, yeah. So, yes. Summer, when you were speaking, you I asked you about the term Oglala, and you said it was a paper tribe. Or a paper yes, tribe. my grandfather said um, Oglala and Chichungu were paper tribes created by this government in 1886. And on Pine Ridge, they tell them every year they have a radio station there called KILI. Mm -hmm. And every year they tell them September 20th, 1886, Red Cloud was recognized as chief of the Oglala band. When his family just recently did a autobiography of Red Cloud where they tell in there that he's from the Cuthead band, because that's what his father signed under the 1868 treaty when they made that. He, and that's where he's from, he's from the Cuthead band. So the seven nations of the Lakota, four of them was put on Shan River, where I'm from. The Nikoju, the two kettle, the Blackfoot, and the Nobos. Itazicho means Nobos. And then there's Hunkpapa, there's Cuthead, and there's Flathead. These are the seven bands of the Lakota. So, as assumption, this is where a lot of assumptions started. When my grandfather was assassinated in 1877, nine years later, Red Cloud was recognized as a, as the chief of the Oglala band. So how could my grandfather be in Oglala when they didn't even exist when he got assassinated? So that's a lot of assumptions that are out there. And if these using these six documents that they look beyond before 1886, because after the Battle of Little Bighorn, there were six bands of Lakota 
the decoder, the nutcoder, the Cheyenne, and the Arapaho were all put on Red Cloud Agency. So how could these 10 groups become something that they're not in 1886? That's not their true identity. So this is where when somebody says they're from, from a burnt eye or from Oglala, see, trying to go Oglala, they're only looking back to 1886. They're not looking beyond that. When our nation had been here before anybody came to this continent of these red nations. So it's time to look at your ancestors. So when Bill was to do his genealogy, you're going to find out you're not from, from here. You all came from Europe. So when I was in Europe, when I talked to the Battle of Little Bighorn, over there they said the Americans did that. So I had to tell them the truth. All the Americans came from Europe. That's truth. So if you do your genealogy, that's what you're going to find unless you're of these, from one of these red nations. Obama said it too. You know, told the truth. So it's time to look at these things. The real truth. With your heart. And then don't lie to yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Some of his followers went, but when my grandfather came on the scene, let's go over here, they all went. Let's go do this, they all went. So when the government seen that the people are following him, well, we're going to deal with him for his people. So we'll give him this agency and like this. So that agency was put into Washington in 1874 by his uncle, Lonehorn. And when they asked him that we'll promise you an agency, I said, I want my uncle's agency that you put in Washington in 1874. That was put up there. But there's a modification, but only the blood family knows these things. <laughs> so, you know, it's time for truth now and time to really seek it. Because under this system, uh, that's why I didn't want to do politics. <laughs> but, <laughs> but they taught me uh, to do these things. Yes. So what's your political vision for the time when possibly you get back? Whenever this court case is done and federal law says you guys are blood family, I have to follow protocol. I have to meet with the South Dakota senators and representatives, and they're the ones that have to introduce <coughs> this to Congress, because that's how these states get heard. I have to follow that protocol because we're under this system. But you're heading somewhere. Yeah, and that's and and that's that's to get his agency that was promised to him, and and under this trust status lands, they have to move everybody out of there because there's 119 families that are entitled to that agency. So we're doing what my grandfather is doing. He's still preserving, protecting the Black Hills, which is our cemetery that we're protecting our people. So, it's a, but it's a wake up call, because that's not our nation. It's the headwaters of Missouri to the headwaters of the North Platte. That's our nation. So all these red nations, I refer to them as nations, because under, under the United Nations, what they recognize as a country, you have to have a land base, you have to have culture, tradition, and language. These four things you got to have. So all the red nations that are here have that. Why I refer to them as red nations. Because they could be recognized under the United Nations as a country. So it's time to think of our ancestors. Time to, you know, like this. So these guys, yes? Before you had to uh, 
prove your identity yeah. as a senator crazy horse. Did you find it frustrating that American Indians are the only race, ethnic group in this country that are required to prove their race, race and ethnicity? Yeah, but that's that's the system they put us under. You know, so we just have to follow protocol and like that, you know, but if you stand up for your nation, your grandfather is who you are, your identity, you're a nation. So what you do for your nation is, is what's right, good, positive, truth, and sacred. But only you could do that for your nation. And just like my grandfather, when he was here, by example, he did these things. Now you have a way to do these things, to stand up for your people. All the, you know, across the country coming, met a lot of um, red nations that aren't recognized under the federal government because the federal government recognizes by blood. But yet, they say, uh, but they're recognized under the state. But they're not showing proof of blood to the government to be recognized as a federal agency. But, but yet, yet they're still remembering their, where they come from. So it's I had to go through the old yeah, yeah. But us, we got, we got, yeah, us, we got put on these agencies because we could show our proof of blood who we are. That's why this government recognizes enrollments and allotments from these federal agencies as proof of your identity, who you are, because you could show by blood your 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 identity, and like this. So that's why they recognize this and stuff. So. It's, yeah, it's, it's a bit frustrating to me, the fact that yeah. you have to prove yeah. that you're American Yeah. So this is what, uh, when we showed our proof, because of these families, these bands, these nations, that have been assuming my family and grandfather. So under the federal law, when you determine the blood heirs, it's time to show proof what you've been, how you're connected by blood to a grandfather or like this. And they can't contest it if you show your proof like this. So sometimes uh, they talk about DNA. Um, DNA, um, uh, when the Smithsonian gave Sidney Boo's hair back, Bill was worked with Sidney Boo's grandson too. And uh, they went to Copenhagen, Denmark, and they did a DNA on his hair because they got it back from the Smithsonian. And when they did the DNA, then they checked his grandson's DNA. And it was the same. That was his grandfather's hair. But this person said that uh, the DNA, he did the DNA of this world. And um, the Asian, African, and Caucasian DNA all came from Europe. And the Red Nation's DNA was unique because their DNA you can't find anywhere in this world but where they're at today, with the exception of I think the Apache and the Hopi have a, uh, some Asian DNA in their DNA. So they're the ones that came across the Bering Strait and came down like this. How, why those Asian DNAs and those two Red Nations DNA. But the other Red Nations that have been here have always been here. Yes, I agree. Yeah, so when my grandfather said, uh, grandson, we walked with the dinosaurs. <laughs> we did. We walked with the dinosaurs. They didn't lie to me. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Why in our language we have a, a word for dinosaurs? Yeah. So, you know, our grandfathers don't lie to us when it comes to stuff like this. So. But, yeah, I mean, every nation has to stand up and do it for their nation. And like this. Nobody could do it for you. And like this, only you can. Just like what we're doing with my grandfather. We started out standing up from our family, now our, our nation, nations and like that, uh, of my grandfather's. Yeah. Well, my, my, dad, my dad married a white woman, which obviously adds to the confusion, hmm. which is why every time I have a conversation like this, the first thing I do is read my card. Yeah. But I, I find that frustrating that it's like, and then, you know, uh, I talk to somebody and they go, you don't look it. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, yeah, I mean, um, uh, in, uh, in our culture, um, we don't have greats in front of a grandfather or a grandson. That's European when they use greats. That's not our way. You're either a grandfather or a grandson. And, and like this, so, so when we put these blood trees together, um, on a paternal side, there's nine generations. I'm fourth, my dad was third. So if I use that way, I'm a uh, three great grandfather to that ninth generation. So my grandchildren are already great grandfather to that ninth generation, even though they're just born, they're day old, if we use that system. <laughs> but that's not our way. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and then us, we have a kid name and we have an adult name. Siblings, brothers and sisters all have a different name. European, they'll just use one name for hundreds of years, centuries. They'll use one name. Us, everybody has a different name. So you have to know your family and like this. Yeah, so just these kind of things uh, uh, only uh, we could do if you're from a blood family. And like that, so. Yes? What is your Lakota name? My Lakota name is Sintesapla Nicho. Black tail calls you in English. That's my name. Yep. Yes. Do you, does your family know where Crazy Horse is buried? Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> my grandfather said a time and day in the future will come when the world will know, but not right now. Because if we say it right now, they'll be over there bothering my grandfather. Absolutely. And because they won't have faith in truth. <laughs> They're gonna have to go see, have to touch it, and have to make sure it's, have to do a DNA and all this stuff, like that. And that's not, you know. Any more questions? Yes. I'm just curious to know uh, how has your book been received within the Lakota community? Um, it's received good, but uh, the one that I have a hard time is Pine Ridge and Rosebud. Pine Ridge and Rosebud are having a hard time with it because um, they're the ones that made the 500 books, movies that are made. And that's not the truth. Why well, that's truth, we could say those are all assumptions. <coughs> because they all say my grandfather is Oglala when that started in 1886. He died in 1877, nine years before that started. So that's where assumptions started. That's not the truth. But nobody said anything until 2001. Now we could say this. Yeah, that's not <laughs> why we're doing this. Yeah, we got well received at Crazy School. Yeah, I mean, uh, on Pine Ridge, uh, they invited me and Bill to the Crazy Horse School. So we talked to the children there. And they honored us and gave us, you know, sang, sang honor song, gave us blankets, and all the children came and shook our hands. You know, so, you know, I mean, it's the ones that have been assuming for so long that they don't want to change because truth hurts. So uh, when, when uh, I was young and my father said, what your grandfather put on that rock are the ones that killed him or claiming him today. So that's those two agencies that had a hand in his death, but they're claiming him. And that's why they're having a hard time. So, you know. so I mean, what was that? Four days ago, we were in the Mohawk Nation. And that woman came and, how come you're doing this now? And like this. I said, we're correcting the truth. You know, the assumptions were truth. I said, there's 500 books written, <laughs> movies that are made. <laughs> This is just one book that we're making, correcting all of this, you know. And we were told to take a, a, a what's that, a vow of silence. I said, you guys didn't, because there's 500 books written and movies that are made, you know, about my grandfather, claiming my grandfather. Now a grandson is saying those are all assumptions, not truth, you know. And you're worried about just one book that we wrote from the blood family. <laughs> 
you guys wrote 500 and movies, made movies and everything. Come on now, you know. But I think she was trying to promote a book that she's writing or something. But, but you know, I mean, it's, it's time for truth now. And just like Bill said, you know, uh, when when these things are written, and if you don't have somebody know, that knows English, that person that's writing is looking through the eyes of a American. American lens they're looking at, writing stuff. That's why he had to know the culture and the spiritual side of our people before he could put anything down. None of these guys did that that wrote these books. And then over here in the East Coast, nobody that goes to the mid, uh, Midwest, when they read something, this is true because it's written down. And they believe it when it isn't the truth. Yeah, you know, so, I mean, the historians we met with in Wyoming, they're the ones that said, we're the ones that put everybody off track because of what we wrote. We didn't know a people, but we wrote about a people that we didn't even know. So when we gave a talk over there, they couldn't believe that we could stand up and just talk like this. Them, they have to have papers and all this and, and like this, and they couldn't just talk from their heart the truth. <laughs> yes? Since I was a young man, I've gone around and talked with a number of elders, or had the privilege of being able to talk with some elders, and they were scared that at some point there might not be enough history to be able to maintain it. Do you feel that the Great Spirit has protected things well enough that this culture is going to be able to continue and reestablish it yes. as well? Yes. Yep. It's a wake-up call for the Red Nations. It's time to, like I said, it's time to look at your ancestors before anybody came to this continent, because you as a nation. It's time to look to that nation. And they all had ways of prayer, each nation. And they all had a way to talk to the Creator, God. And that's what they forgot about. So it's time to go back to your ancestors. They were doing it right. Do it like your ancestors. And it's time to be truthful and honest with yourself, like this. You know, so. I mean, that's because he was doubting. Yeah. So my grandfather showed himself, and, and then then he put it together that, hey, okay, this is what he really it's said. Really <laughs> yeah. it's a real because, deal. because it's see to believe. Mm -hmm. Touch it to make sure it's real. Mm -hmm. That's the system that's here. Yes? Uh -huh. Why did you say Crazy Horse died? At Fort Robinson. But at the time, it was Camp Robinson. After his death, it became Fort Robinson. So um, our nation, the Lakota Nation, around our nation, there's a five-mile strip that this government took. And um, why all the forts are made on this strip, why all the capitals are on this strip, Helena, Bismarck, Pierre, Lincoln, Cheyenne are all on this strip outside of our Lakota nation. So when the Lakota, Dakota, and Lakota stand up together, we're known as the Great Sioux Nation. And seven countries know of our nation before the United States, because we already dealt with seven countries before the United States became the United States. So they know of our nation. So time for truth and like this and stuff. Yes? Yeah. And uh, about the size of Connecticut, and it's the Long Island for five hours. Uh, everybody talks about um, Custer's battle, Custer all the time, but uh, what happened at Wounded Knee was really bad. Yeah. Hardly anything there. I mean, you know, um, I was very depressed at the site, and there was a very small wow, a monument up on, up on the hill. There was no building whatsoever to, to go get more information of what happened there. It was like nothing. Yeah, a lot of assumptions. You know, we were saying, like, there's nothing here. You have nothing to remember what happened. It was just a whole bunch of things that ever happened in the history of the Indian part of my history. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just surprised that the government, that they don't want nothing there, basically. 
Yeah. Yeah, well, that county where I come from, uh, Zeebai County on Cheyenne River, one year will be the poorest county in this nation. The next year will be Shannon County where Pine Ridge is. And we'll be the second poorest county in the nation. And whenever we're the poorest, then Shannon County is the second poorest in the nation. They've been switching back and forth, but nobody's telling them. And I live in Dupree. And and then and then down there too, yeah. And down there too, uh, when we were, while we were in hiding, in the thirties, some of the in-laws heard our stories. They took it back to Pine Ridge and told these stories and put themselves in it, because nobody from family could say nothing. So the slim buttes that our family uh, in that book is northwest part of um, of South Dakota. It's 20 miles north and south, 10 miles east and west. That's the stronghold that my, our family were talking about. They took it back down there and they said the, the Badlands was a stronghold. I mean, that is up there where their family was. But on Pine Ridge, there's a little hill, they call it Slim Buttes and like this, from our family stories. There's a sheep mountain that's up there in the northwest part of it. And then before where Pine Ridge is, Red Cloud, he was down there by Fort Robinson, his agency. Before that, he was by Fort Laramie. Where Pine Ridge is, that was Spotted Tail Agency. But when they made, gave my grandfather this agency, they moved Red Cloud to where Spotted Tail was and they moved him east. And the government said, these two, uh, don't, they could kill each other, fight each other like this. Huh? Why they put them like that together? But uh, these are stuff that uh, uh, they're not telling. Like yourself. Always be truthful and honest yourself when you speak of the truth. And make sure it's the truth that you're talking. That way you're not lying to yourself when you speak the truth. And when they took our children, the Creator's family hid the children. Why we still know our culture, language, traditions, and like this. But um, sometimes they're going to ask uh, from what this government did to my family, you know, uh, being hunted and all this. And this is where I have to tell them the truth. That as truth a second ago is already in the past. You can't turn time back. Nobody can. But the change that needs to be made is now and the future. What well, we could make it just change, and that's where this change has to come. Because everything in the past is already done, can't change it, already happened, and all this. So right now, today and tomorrow is where you look to make these changes so it doesn't happen again. And like that, you know, so. That's why I always say, you always have to be truthful and honest. So sometimes I ask, because we don't you feel revengeful and like this, but. I have to tell the truth that, hey, that already happened. I can't turn time back. If I can, I'll, I'll save my family. And like this, but I can't. It already happened. It's just like what you just said a second ago is already in the past. You can't take it, you know, like this. But now in the future is where we have to concentrate, where we be made. So it's time for these things now, like this. So, I, me, I don't, because how my grandfather look at a person, it's at the heart, not the color of their skin, and like this. And that's why my grandfather, how he feels about children, why we want to, even though it already happened, but where they're laying, we want them to come home to their families, <coughs> belongs to them. And we have a way of prayer that we could find these out and do this make a correction, at least for those families, for our people, and like this. So, um, but, you know, each, each nation has a way of, of making a prayer to the Creator. Their ancestors have talked to God. And that's why I said, look at your ancestors, because that's how you have to walk to talk with the Creator and God. You know, so, but again, only each individual could do this. Nobody could do it for you, and like this. 
you know, so it's time to walk with respect on her grandmother. I always be truthful and honest to yourself, make this. So these kind of things, I mean, uh, you know, um, you know, the children and like this, or what you're saying, you know. I mean, everybody feels bad, but it already happened. You can't turn time back. So now we got to, today and tomorrow, make sure it doesn't happen and, and always be truthful and honest. And time to, in our language, okichapo means help each other. It's time to do that. Don't look at skin color, look at your heart like this. But again, only each individual could do this. So why I said everything comes to, nobody could walk in your shoes but you. And like this, so. But, you know, it's time for these things. And like that, so. <coughs>